Cinematography has been described as the art of placing shadows. And if you think about it, that's really kind of true. Let's look at the example of if you're drawing a sketch, a white sheet of paper. You got a whole bunch of light there, right? And what do you do with your pencil? You go in and add the dark. You're adding the shadows, and that's what really shapes that paper into looking like the image you want. Light's the same way. You have a brightly lit subject. There's no definition or depth. It's the shadows that bring that out. Let's go back to our opening sketch, where we had that shot where we showed the monster and it was brightly lit up. No shadows, no artistry, no mood, no good, right? But the second shot we showed, we had placed a lot of shadows. There was a lot of mystery in there, and that really brought home the effect. That's what a lot of lighting is about. If that's the kind of image that you're looking for, you need to know how to place the shadows, how many shadows to place, and where to place them to get the image to convey the mood you're looking for. Because when you cut the iris in half, it's actually only allowing in one-fourth as much, the same reason as the inverse square rule. So if you want to cut the iris down by one stop, you want to make it 40% smaller. So that's why the first number on your lens, if you have a really fast lens, it might be f1, and the next number is f1.4. And then what's 40% more than f1.4? Hmm, f2. 1.4 times 1.4 is 2, so now we have f2. And 40% more than that? 2.8. 2.0 times 1.4, 2.8. Every f-stop is 40% more progression. There's levels and levels you can go into a professional waveform monitor. We're only gonna go across the surface of it and talk about basically how you use it to judge exposure, to know what you're getting. A lot of people may be familiar with a histogram. A waveform monitor is pretty much nothing like a histogram. A histogram is a snapshot of how brightness is distributed over an entire image. If the histogram is all bunched up over on the right side, maybe you got an image that's too bright. And if it's bunched up over on the left side, it's too dark, right? But that's like referencing your entire image all at one little clump. A waveform monitor doesn't do that at all because a waveform monitor tells you at a glance, first of all, on the left to right, it's actually a representation of what your image is. So as you see somebody walk through the image, you'll see it happen on the waveform monitor. You'll be able to follow what that object is because you can see it play out. It looks like a display from the matrix or something like that, but you, you pretty soon you get to learn how to read that. 